Watch you guys got another video here for you on how to secure Windows 7. Now a bunch of you guys wanted to know how to keep using Windows 7 safely after support ends. Now Windows 7 support ended on January the 14th 2020. Now that means you will not receive any more updates for uh, Windows 7 but some of you guys may still be missing some updates. So the very first step that I would make sure you do is make sure you've got every possible update available from Microsoft. So you want to go there and get all of the updates. So go over to the uh, control panel and go to Windows Updates and uh, fully update it. Okay, Use every single update possible for that particular operating system. Remember, once these are all downloaded and installed, you're not going to receive any more updates. So once you've got all of these, that is it. So now you're going to need to batten down the edges and make sure Windows 7 is pretty much secure as it can possibly be. So I'm going to take you through a bunch of steps to make sure that Windows 7 is locked down tight and uh, you're not going to have any problems. So does that mean I've changed my mind and you can continue to use Windows 7 rather than upgrade to another operating system? And my answer is still the same. I still think that you're crazy for using Windows 7. Now the ways I'm going to show you in this video are probably some of the best ways of staying safe on Windows 7. But you're also going to have to use a bit of common sense as well and watch yourself what you're doing online. Another option is Zone Alarm. Zone Alarm has an antivirus program which you can use for one PC at £1.55 per month or you can get an annual fee for £11.85. That is an absolute bargain. It works with all versions of Windows including Windows 7 and if you've never heard of ransomware before then you want to go over to their website and read about it or watch some of my videos. This will also help with auto file restoration, file protection and PC shield. It blocks any malicious sort of attempts to uh, lock your PC and this will block some of the nastiest ransomware out there on the market. As you can see here we've got Bad Rabbit. We've got Petra, we've got also Loki and uh, WannaCry, Crypto Wall, Serba. If you want to know what these look like, I have made videos on these in the past. And this will block all of those, which will give you some sort of protection. For our next step, we're going to be setting up a standard user account. So go into Control Panel. And what we're going to do here is go into User Accounts. You can see by default, Windows automatically makes you an administrator. You never ever want to run your system as an administrator. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new account for a standard user. So manage other accounts, click on this one here, and this will allow us to then create a new user account. So you can see here, create new user account. We're going to click on there. And this one is going to be a standard user account. You can see here a standard user account will come with some restrictions here. You can use software on the PC, but you won't be able to, uh, you know, basically install any programs or anything like that without the administrator password. So give that account a username. And then what we need to do is make sure that administrator account has a password. So we're going to go into the user account for the administrator and create a password. Make sure you give it a, some sort of password here. You can give it a strong password. That's what I'd advise you to do. I'm just going to do a short password because this is a tutorial, but you should give it a nice, long, strong password here. Once we've done that, we can create our password. And now you'll see that the administrator account has a password on it. So what we're going to do is manage another account here. Click on this one here. Once we've clicked on there, what we're going to need to do here is we need to log in to our standard user account. And this is the account that we're going to be using on this computer. Now, if you want to know whether this is a strong uh, defense mechanism against malware, I have made a video showing you how strong this method is. It's pretty robust and it stops a lot of malware from actually uh, starting up and getting onto the system. So I've pushed Control Alt Delete and I'm going to log into my new account which I've just created called Brightech. You can call yours whatever you like but basically once we've done that it will need to uh, create the user profile. As you can see here it's given me the option now to log into either one of these accounts. Okay, So the one we're going to go into is the Brightech account. Once we log into this account it will start to set it up for us. 
so we can then uh, continue with the setup process. Now you will be able to get all access to all your programs and stuff like that. Any changes that you make on the system, you will have to put in your administrator password. A lot of people find this a bit of a, a bind to keep doing that, but the problem is it's a security measure and that's what you should be doing as a user. You shouldn't be running around as an administrator because that's how malware starts to activate itself on the system very easily because it, it's it's already got administrator privileges. Okay, so that's now done. We're at the desktop of our newly created account. So you can see here, we're in our proper account here. Now, any changes we make here, we will need to put in our uh, password. So let's go ahead and start to do some other changes. So I'm gonna go into control panel here and gonna go into user accounts and you can see here user accounts again and you can see here this is our account now you should really put a password on this account also but what you want to do next is change uh, the UAC here so you will need to put in your um, administrator password here at this stage you can see how it's prompting me to do that and you can see I've got this at the maximum setting make sure you put the maximum user account setting for that account okay and also the administrator account that will protect your system a lot better click yes here and it will allow to set that in stone so any changes to the system like that you will need to put in your administrator password okay so let's move on to another uh, set in which we can make to make this a little bit more secure and make it a bit harder uh, for any sort of malware or ransomware to attack our system now the next thing you're going to want to do is download an antivirus program of your choice. Now this one is a vast, as you can see here, it's the free version, but it's good enough for what we need here. We've got our protection here for our virus scanners, also core shields. You can see there's no firewall here and there's no ransomware shield on here, but don't worry about that. We've got the ransomware covered and I'll also uh, get the firewall sorted out in a second. So we've got passwords here, which I'd advise you to start using, storing your passwords to make them encrypted on there to stop any sort of malware from stealing those is a really good thing to do. So you can see we've got our antivirus program. You can choose whatever flavor of antivirus you want, but try not to use the Microsoft Essentials because it was never really that great on Windows 7. Next up, what we're gonna do is change our DNS server we can use a secure DNS which is called open DNS now if you're really paranoid you can put this on if you don't want it on there you don't have to but it will keep you a lot safer on the internet if you are using the internet so go into here and go to consumer and when you click on the consumer area this will give you access to open DNS family shield it's a free one that you can use and it will block all adult content and a bunch of other stuff as well on there. They do do a open DNS home version, which is a classic version, which does have um, some filtering on it. And it will let um, adult sites through and stuff like that. So depending on what your flavor is, just go with one of those, okay? And to change that, what you need to do is go into your network settings. So we're gonna go to control panel here, and we're gonna go into our network settings here open this up network and sharing center and also inside here we need to go to our local area network should be just where it says a uh, connection there you should see a little local area connection click on properties here and you can see straight away it's asking for administrator password and that's because we are not an administrator we are running as a standard user next we can click on the TCP IP version 4 and we can now put in our DNS server IPs, which we can get from their website. It does tell you those on their website. Put those in there and click OK, and you're now running on a DNS uh, server, which is secure. Next up is an optional thing that you can do, which is drive encryption. If you really want to get really sort of uh, strong about uh, security, then encrypting your drive is another way of going about things. Veracrypt offer a, a free solution which you can download and install and it will encrypt all of your drive or a partition or whatever it is you want to encrypt. It can do that for you. Uh, the only thing is you have to remember the key code to get it open because if you lock it down and encrypt it and basically you forget that you will not be able to recover your data it will be very very tough because it will be a very strong encryption key on there 
Now some people out there may want to encrypt their drives, that's why I put this as an option because uh, some people are pretty paranoid about data collecting and all that sort of stuff and they may want to just encrypt their drive and uh, there is an option. You can use also a BitLocker on there as well if you've got Windows 7 Pro and above you can use BitLocker and basically encrypt your files or drives or folders whatever it is you want to do. Maybe you've got a sensitive folder on there that you want to just encrypt that part you can do it with VeraCrypt and also uh, BitLocker to do that for you or you can just encrypt the whole drive. Just make sure you keep that key safe so you can unlock it and uh, unencrypt it when you need to okay and pretty much that is the encryption side of things the next other best thing you should be doing is backing up your data and iomi backup has a free version which you can download and make sure you back up all that data that way if you've got a full backup of all your data in more than one place at least if you do get hit with any sort of uh, ransomware or anything like that maybe you miss one of the steps that i told you to do because you didn't want to do it uh, and you do get hit with it at least you'll have backups of all your data it's always good to keep a storage of your data off site and you can use some sort of uh, cloud storage or iDrive or something like that whatever floats your boat really there's plenty of them out there whatever suits your pocket and suits your needs just go and get one of those and that way you can have a backup on your computer a backup inside a NAS drive or an external drive or something like that and also back up in the cloud it's uh, good to have that option available so it'd be three two one backup okay so it's always good to do that okay so that is our backup solution taken care of so we're going to move on to the next piece of security software which I think is essential especially for Windows 7 would be using a firewall I wouldn't use a Windows firewall. If you use a strong piece of software firewall, you're going to end up with a lot better results of monitoring what's going on on your network. And you'll be able to see what's going in your computer and what's going out of your computer. And you'll start to understand it's a lot more secure. So uh, Glasswire is another piece of software which you can use. There's also other ones out there like Zone Alarm does have a, a, a firewall software which you can use which is free which is what I use on my PC but I just wanted to swap it and change it up a little bit because we've already used um, the same software for the anti-ransomware. So you can use something like this to monitor the usage and also it will show you a graph and it will show you uh, the actual firewall here and what is using uh, your uh, data and what's going in and out of your computer so it's important to have something like this especially with an older system you'll be able to keep track of what's going on so that is essential for security next up is another part of security which is patching the system without any updates from Microsoft you will need to start thinking about software patches and you can get that by using patch my PC this is a piece of software because we're going to be installing it we will need to put in our administrator password again and down it will come onto the computer we can then install that on our system and what that's going to do is check all of our software and all of the stuff we've installed on this system to make sure it's fully updated now it's important that you use the most latest browsers and update them and keep them updated eventually what might happen though is that the software companies might cease to update browsers and that's when it will become super risky using uh, Windows 7 even more so you can see here this will basically monitor all of the um, software on your system here it will tell you in green whether it's fully updated and you're using the latest version you can see the browser is up to date and it's using the latest version and if you've got other software on here like audacity or any other software that you're using it will tell you whether it's the latest version so why is it important to keep all the software updated well the reason why is because you're using an outdated version of windows and it's going to be important to make sure all of the software that you're using is updated to the best of its ability because that way they can't use that as a way of getting into your computer especially when there's uh, you know some sort of exploit they might find with outdated piece of software they can use that to get into the system and uh, exploit your uh, vulnerabilities so make sure that you keep all that stuff updated so those are my recommendations for people that are adamant that they want to continue to use Windows 7 I would definitely start to implement those onto my Windows 7 operating system if I was using Windows 7 that way you're going to give yourself the best chance of staying safe 
on the internet because once it starts getting about another year old or even six months old it's going to be pretty dated and you're going to be vulnerable so make sure you stay safe out there guys and keep your system updated to the best of its ability with some of the uh, latest security software out there which is available anyway hope you found this video useful a bunch of people was asking for it in the comments section below amongst all of the hatred comments that i got for that windows 7 uh, video but anyway i've done my best to try and help you out for the ones that want to stick with windows 7 so i hope it's been useful to you my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk i shall see you again for another video tomorrow bye for now now if you haven't subscribed yet Hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.